In this screencast, I will show you several different ways of excluding email alerts in Event Sentry. If you've installed Event Sentry and enabled email alerts and selected either the medium or high email volume option, then your inbox may look similar to this. So let's start. How can we exclude events in Event Sentry? The first way I'm going to show you is if you have Outlook installed. If you're running Microsoft Outlook, and this works with all major versions of Outlook, then simply identify the event that you want to exclude, and we'll just start with this event here. So this is a service that changed its status. It's not critical, so we don't want to get an alert about it. Now, keep in mind, I artificially changed events into default settings for these alerts to show up. By default, you will not get email alerts when services like these uh, change their status. So the first thing you do in Outlook is you open the event, the email, you place your cursor inside uh, just above that table here, and you hit until you see that down arrow, and you select the entire table, and you hit Control C on the keyboard. So the entire event now is copied into the clipboard. Then we go into the Management Console. In the Management Console, we want to navigate to the Event Log Packages. So this is where all the filter rules for email alerts live. In order to keep things clean, we'll create a new package here, and we'll call it Email excludes. And in order for this package to apply to all hosts and all groups, which I want in this case, I'm going to make this package global. As you can see here is a little globe icon here. Next I'm going to go into the properties and I'm going to override the actions of all subsequent rules I'm going to add to this package. So I want our rules to apply to default emails because that's the email account that's being used to deliver emails to my Outlook inbox here. So I'm going to say override all of the objects in this package to use the default to apply to the default email action. All right, so this is good. I've got a package here. Action is going to, anything I'm going to add here is going to apply to default email. Next, I'm going to add a new rule. I'm going to add an exclude filter because we want to exclude this event from being emailed. I'm going to call this service monitoring. I'm just going to call this test for now. And we can see that the default email is automatically checked. We cannot change it because it's set on the package level. By default, we have uh, several different event logs checked, several different severities, and so forth. We're going to place the cursor into any of these fields here and hit Ctrl V on the keyboard. And magically here, the correct event log, the correct severity, and the correct source category and event ID are being filled in by Event Sentry. So let's go back here. This matches everything we have here. Event ID 10 100, service monitoring. It's orange, which means it's a warning. So Event Sentry does all that for you. Super easy, super quick. The only thing that Event Sentry does not add is text from the actual event message itself. So what this would do, this particular event here, would exclude any service status change event that's logged by Event Sentry. That may not be what you want. So in this particular case, we just want to exclude this diagnostic system host service. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And the, really the easiest way to make sure this only applies to that service is to simply add a wildcard here and say diagnostic system host. And now, this exclude filter is only going to apply to events that include this text here, diagnostic system host. And of course, we can also change the name of this filter here to make it more descriptive and say diagnostic system host. So that would be one way to do it. All right, so you've excluded one and we go through the list and we see, ah, oh, there's another service that changes its status all the time, network setup service. All right. Well, we want to add that as well. All right, we'll, start, we'll say network setup service. And you'll notice a new field appears here, which says chain multiple content filters using a or. This means that if this filter, if this event is encountered, if it matches either diagnostic system host or network setup service, it will be excluded. Now, of course, this name doesn't match anymore. It, it's too specific, so we're going to change that, and we're just going to call it service monitoring. So any other services that we stumble across that we're getting alerts from, we can just add them to the list here, and they will be excluded. Super easy. It's very clear. Anybody else who goes into the management console will see email excludes, 
and we'll quickly understand that service monitoring certain services here are excluded. Again, remember, you have to wait to see this little black arrow that's pointing down, select it and hit Ctrl C. Now, if you don't have Outlook, of course, you can still exclude events. So now let's take a look at that. Another way to do it, that's easy and doesn't require you to manually set up the filter, is to use the built-in event viewer. So Event Center comes with the built-in event viewer. And if you look here, you can see all the local events that are being logged. Here we have another service monitoring event. And that's, of course, the one that we actually just saw in our email inbox. So let's pick a different one. But the concept here is the same. So let's pick an event that we want to exclude. And let's pick a different one here. So here's a different one. So this says that the status for a driver, in this case, Windows Defender Boot Driver, remains stopped. OK, let's just pretend that we don't care about this. We can right click the event here and say Add Exclude Filter, or we can open it and also click the Exclude this event from one or more actions. So now we say Filter Name. Again, we'll add it to the filter that we, to the package that we just created, Email Excludes. We'll call it Driver Exclusion, since it's a driver. So, um, and we hit OK. This is very similar. This does exactly the same thing that we did with Outlook. It pre-creates a filter with the correct log, the correct severity selected. We're in the same package here, so that's why the default email is here as well. Uh, the only thing, like I said earlier, that it doesn't do is it doesn't specify a content filter. So in order to get this, we can come back here. We can take a look here, and it's called Windows Defender Boot Driver WD Boot. So Let's add that as well. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. We'll hit plus here. But this time we choose insertion string. What does that mean? Now we can match dynamic strings inside the event message directly. If we click the preview button here, we'll see the template for this event. It says the status for driver percent one remains percent three and so forth. In our case, the driver name was WD boot, which is the corresponding, which corresponds to percent one, the first insertion string. So what I will do is I will say, I will simply specify it like this, and that way I can make sure that it only applies to this insertion string. So this is a little bit more advanced. You don't have to do this. You can still use the regular content filter, but that is an easy way to make sure it only applies to this one string in the event. It doesn't matter what else appears in the event, and this makes sure that you don't accidentally match something else. So those are the two ways of doing it. Again, if you just wanted to go the easy route, you can just say WD boot and exclude it that way. So in this particular case, they will achieve the same thing. And another way that you can exclude alerts is by doing it manually. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'm gonna find a different event here. And what I have here is I have events from the Windows Task Scheduler event log that I want to exclude, okay? To keep things simple, we'll start by excluding any error event that matches these, these uh, event IDs 103 and 202. So let's go back here. We're gonna click the package and we're gonna say add exclude filter. I'm gonna call it task scheduler. So we'll start with this. The first thing we'll need is we'll need the event log. The event log is this is the third line here. Microsoft Windows Tasks Schedule Operational. You'll notice that this log doesn't show up here because it's a custom application services event log. So we'll navigate over here, hit the plus icon, and we'll locate the log here. And this will be under Microsoft Windows Task Scheduler Operational. So we'll add that to the list. We'll uncheck all the other logs because this event won't appear in those logs. Next, we're gonna look at the severity. Here, in both cases, we have an error severity. So I'm gonna just uncheck everything. That's not an error. Move forward. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the event source. That's right above the log. So we're going to paste that in there. And now we have the event IDs. So there's two event IDs we want to exclude, 103 and 202. 
and we can separate those with a comma. So now this filter will apply to both of these events. You can also use ranges. You can say 202 to 210, for example. So this is a very generic filter, but let's just say we like it that way. We don't really care what's inside those events in those alerts. We just want to always exclude any error event from the task scheduler that's 103 or 202. And that's really how easy it is to exclude events. If you want to organize things a little more, you can go in here, you can create a folder. So for example, we can say, all right, those two events that we had earlier, the driver exclusion and service monitoring, those are events that are generated by event entry. As we can see here, the source is event entry. So we can group those here into the event entry folder. And in the task scheduler, we can just leave out here. And if you get another task scheduler event later on, then we can add that into a custom, a new folder as well. And a final tip, if you ever get an alert and you want to know which filter was responsible for this event, then you can simply look at the subject line. So here what you can see is that the event was sent by the email critical events filter. I'll show you the main properties of the event which filter actually sent you that email. And if you're not sure where this filter is, then you can simply go to home, go to find email critical events automatically populated for you. You simply hit find, double click it here, and there it is. So this is the filter that is responsible for sending that email alert to your inbox, email critical events. So this is a filter that's global, applies to all computers being monitored, looks in all of the event logs here and more. See the little informational icon here. So that means there is, there's some custom settings here. It applies to any warning error or critical event and just about any source category event ID. Whenever there's nothing said, it means it applies to anything. So this can often be very helpful if you're trying to determine, well, why am I getting this alert? Uh, I don't have a rule set up for this. Where is this coming from? So just look for the name of the filter that, said it, that sent that alert, search for it, and then you can go from there. When you're done, simply save the configuration to make sure that the settings actually get applied. And that from that point forward, you shouldn't be getting any more alerts about these events. And that's how easy it is to exclude email alerts from Event Sentry. Thanks for watching.